Hello everybody, I'm Mike Levin of Levinix and today I'm going to show you just a few things about Levinix that I have been skimming over. That last tutorial was 10 minutes long on Git and was a real mind bender, so I figure today we'll just do some of the easy stuff. The layout of Levinix is as few files possible to make sure that you click the correct one for your operating system. As you can see on the Mac, it's real obvious because it gets a nice icon, but the others are easy to identify in your platform. And then there's a README, and then there's this reset directory. And I have not touched Levinix since our last tutorial, so it actually has the Hello World program on there and the Git repository. And I'm going to click this reset from a Mac and there's also from Linux and Windows, but I'm on a Mac. And when we do that, you'll see that it clears out your error logs and also puts this home-backup.qcal there. Now what this is, is that it's actually your home directory where you might have been doing any coding. And that's useful because if you reset it by accident, you can quickly copy this over and now you have a copy of your work if you ever wanted to go back. What you don't want to do is ever click reset twice in a row because if you didn't move this out, it will in fact write over the home backup that was sitting there and your work is lost forever. So avoid that. But so long as you copy it out of the directory, you're pretty much safe. And how would you restore uh, to your old state? Well, you'd actually go into this directory, which on a Macintosh, you have to right click or option click and show package contents and you would drill down into this location where all the files are just sort of thrown in there together and there is going to be a home hyphen fresh which is the backup or the always fresh one that a reset uses and then the home.qcal which is the new one that's going to be used well, if you wanted to go back to your old work, you'd simply drag that out there, drag this in here, and rename it, and bam, your old work is back, even after a reset. So, Levinix is designed so that you can freely reset and try again and always have a fresh server. And we've been seeing the server get built over and over, and another thing I want to show you today is where the instructions for those server builds are coming from. So everything is actually put in the reset directory because I want to minimize the things that are showing here so that people who are new to the system have as few things to click as possible. So inside the reset is this server folder and inside the server folder is a recipe for building the server and all the ingredients that the recipe uses. But I'm going to look at the recipe and I'm going to look at it using Unix tools because one of the things you're going to encounter is if you do this from a Macintosh, Macs have a different concept of line returns than other systems. So it's very easy to quote mangle uh, text files by going in and editing it from a Mac. It's quite fragile to edit text files from a Mac. Uh, you have to go and clean them up. So I open a terminal and then I cd to home slash desktop slash Levinix ls cd into Levinix on Mac ls cd contents ls cd mac os oh i'm going down into the wrong directory i'm all the way down here cd dot dot cd dot dot cd dot dot ls okay cd reset ls cd server ls oh there's my recipe now i've got vi on the Mac just like I have it on Levinix. This uh, starts to show you how similar the operating system underlying the Mac is to Linux because it's Unix and they have a lot of similarities. 
and I'll open this up a little bit wider to get rid of line returns as best I can. And this file is how we build the server. I won't describe it line by line, but basically this upper portion is an introduction with a bunch of color coding. And then there's some commands to pull things from a uh, repository, a lot like the way the Debian system works. Tiny Core Linux has something like Debian. And uh, this TFTP is very interesting. Uh, Linux is not so much my own distribution of Linux as it is a remix. And I'm taking advantage of little utilized features in different products, such as a built-in TFTP server in QEMU, which I used to copy over all the ingredients files from the host computer to the guest computer. So in this way you can actually do things from the environment you're familiar with, like edit this recipe file, and it actually gets copied over and used on the Linux, uh, Linux side. Uh, it's a pretty neat trick. And then there's some commands in here that are unique to Tiny Core Linux, the uh, version of Linux that I'm remixing as Linux, and uh, I'll tell you about those in a future tutorial because it's quite involved. But basically, Tiny Core Linux is a involatile core operating system that runs in RAM every time, so nothing ever goes wrong, and it runs very fast. And then all your applications are either in separate partitions or shall we say, superimposed on top of the involatile core uh, so that they look like they're uh, mapped into normal operating system paths. And that would be things like um, copying the drop bear start command in this directory opt boot sync and a couple other things that go on here and then a command at the very end which uh, writes everything into a file tool.lst and then runs a backup of file tool.lst. So whenever Linux runs, there's a small uh, backup recovery that occurs that gets mixed into the core OS so that you have your original state that you left off. It's actually quite involved, but also quite elegant. Thank you, and that's all I'm going to show you for today. Escape Q, uh, calling Q, and uh, I'll see you next time.